Let's talk about one-dimensional arrays. An array is a collection of data, all of one data type. It is stored in contiguous memory in the computer, which just means side by side. When memory is allocated to an array, it is fixed or static, not flexible to grow or shrink. An array is very easy to manage using a process called indexing. Here are some examples of arrays. As you can see, there are two ways you might see an array declared, either using the square brackets, as in this first example, or by using the word array to indicate it. The last line shows a typical way to instantiate an array using the curly braces, with values inside separated by commas. The name you call the array is totally up to you, depending on the meaning you want it to indicate. Here are some other array types for decimals, strings, characters, or Boolean values. You need to know how to process an array, specifically how to create one with the data type that you need, use a length method or process to check to see how many elements it contains, to access individual elements, either to use them in a process or to change the element value, and then use a loop to access all of the elements in the array, either to output them or use them in a process of some kind. This example creates a new array of integers, initially empty, but the elements are filled by default with all zeros. Some languages will have a method that gives you the length of an array, or use a process to determine the length. Arrays are zero index based, which means the first element is in position zero, and the last element is in position length minus one. This is a very important aspect of arrays that you must be aware of, so that you don't run the risk of stepping out of bounds when trying to process an array. To assign a value to a place in an array, you name the array and use the square brackets with the value inside to indicate which position you want to access, and then use an assignment statement to make the change. The value in brackets is called the index. Often you know from the start what elements you want in an array. And what you see here is a way to instantiate an array, which just means to declare it and give it beginning values all in one step. To output elements from an array, use the same indexing process mentioned before, as you can see with these examples. To change array elements, again, use the indexing process to make the desired assignment. If you need to output the entire array, use a loop like this one. It is very handy to use a t-chart like the one you see here to trace through the behavior of a loop in order to predict the output, a technique you really need to master when processing loops. Here you see a typical process used with elements of a numeric array, adding up all of the values. You would use this if the array contained the grades for a student, and you wanted to add them all up to find the average, after which you would divide the sum by the length of the array to complete the process. In summary, you need to know these characteristics of an array, and you need to know how to do these processes using an array.